I'm standing here with Steven Statler, who is the senior vice president for a new company called Williot. And we are at the, at the AIPIA Congress 2017 in Amsterdam. Uh, Steven, what is this company all about? So Williard is a new semiconductor company and we are developing a Bluetooth beacon or a Bluetooth radio that operates without batteries, without the need to plug it in. And unlike a conventional Bluetooth beacon, which is kind of this size, this is what you'd find in the Apple store. It's the thing that triggers your app to welcome you to the store. That's how they know you've crossed the threshold. Unlike those beacons, what we're making is going to be the size of a sticker. So it's smaller than an NFC sticker, about the size of your thumb. Um, and the cost, rather than being $30 for a Bluetooth beacon, our price point that we're aiming for is less than a dollar. So what this, is, what this means is you're going to be able to embed Bluetooth into products and into the packaging of products so that the products can speak for themselves to anyone who has a smartphone. But still, we are talking about, like uh, you said, one euro, one dollar each. Um, it's still too expensive to be on the mass-produced goods, so to say. Yeah, there's no question. Just like um, NFC uh, and RFID, which are, are cheaper than what we're initially aiming for, uh, you're not going to be using this in very low-cost products. But for um, higher-cost uh, products, um, then this is really going to help solve all sorts of problems. So we're going to be able to help with anti-counterfeit measures because um, we can um, store digital certificates in our, in our tags. And our tags are actually going to have a processor, they're going to have sensors, and they're going to have this ability to talk to the phone. And it's not just packaging. Our stickers will be in wallpaper. Um, they'll be used for asset tracking. Um, and you know, any, any situation where a marketeer wants to engage a customer with a phone, then this is a really good option. And the thing that is really distinctive about it, as opposed to something like RFID, which, which is great at what it does, is you don't, need, you don't need to tap. So a Bluetooth tag in packaging can activate an app or even if there isn't an app, it can surface a, a, a web page address on the lock screen of an Android phone, and it can do it even if the user hasn't done anything. So we've done some measurements, we've done some tests, and there's a two orders of magnitude difference in the engagement between people who are willing to actually tap and people who are willing to respond to something that pops up on their phone. People are, are lazy. We like to think they're going to tap on our packaging. They don't. But if you can surface an alert, especially if it's very relevant and engaging, then 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 they will act. <clears throat> Do you see this uh, mainly as a thing for the consumer goods market, or is it to track the product all the way from 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 the story, from the production to out to the customer? Well, that's the cool thing with Bluetooth. You can do both. So Bluetooth allows you to implement privacy control. So you can use it in the store and you can actually use it when the customer takes the product home. But the really cool thing is it can be used in the manufacturing process and in the supply chain process as well. Uh, and there's a big revolution happening with Bluetooth because um, you've been able to do real-time location tracking where you can track where products are in a warehouse but it's been very expensive and Bluetooth is cutting the cost of that by an order of magnitude. So a system to track pallets in a, in a warehouse using traditional uh, ultra-wideband technology would be millions of dollars and we can cut that cost by uh, a factor of 10 using conventional Bluetooth tags and then we're going to cut it still further with a tag that is a passive tag because we don't have to pay for batteries and you don't have to worry about replacing the batteries when they run out of juice. <coughs> so how long is the lifetime of this product? Well, it's effectively perpetual because uh, we, we're basically powering the tag from the energy that surrounds us. Uh, so all around us there are Bluetooth radios. There's a radio in my watch that's emitting energy. There's radios in the phone, there's radios in the uh, Wi-Fi access points. And so we're being bathed in radio frequency energy 
Um, and the thing that our engineers are doing is doing some really revolutionary work to be able to operate the chip at incredibly low power so that it can actually compute uh, and do what's necessary to get a signal to your phone. And can you, is this in the form of a label or can you print, do you print it and can you, in that case can you print it directly on the package or? Well, it, it's a silicon chip, um, so the production process is really just like RFID. In fact, we're kind of standing on the shoulders of two industries. We're standing on the shoulders of the, the Bluetooth industry because there's all the connectivity, the fact that you can buy a phone for 100 bucks and don't have to spend 3,000 bucks on a RFID reader. But we're standing on the shoulders of the RFID industry because they've been working on this packaging technology that allows them to take a chip and produce something that can be inserted in a sneaker or in a cardboard box or in a wet environment. And so all of that inlay um, innovation and the production techniques that can be executed by a machine uh, is, is what we're relying on. So whatever packaging technology has been used with RFID, we can work with that. It's just that our chip talks Bluetooth rather than RFID. And uh, uh, how much data can you store in this? Um, well, um, that's to be designed. So we're in development. Our chip is going to be available for proof of concepts next year. But we've been looking at use cases like cold chain, and we believe that we have enough capacity to be able to take readings um, uh, from products uh, and from the, the atmosphere and, and store timestamps throughout the delivery of a product. So all of this is pretty revolutionary and actually one of the things that we're announcing today, five minutes ago, um, is that uh, we have uh, just closed an investment round uh, with Qualcomm Ventures and M Ventures, which is the venture capital arm of uh, the German Merck pharmaceutical company. And we're tremendously excited about it. Uh, the company actually closed its A round in its first month of existence based on the caliber of the engineering team that were the founders. Uh, but to have Qualcomm, who are the leader in mobile semiconductors, and Merck, who have a keen eye for what it's going to take to take their packaging and address some of the, the common challenges in the pharmaceutical space. We think that says a lot about the direction that we're headed in. Does this mean that you have to improve your German also? <laughs> yeah, my German is terrible, so I definitely need to do that. I don't know if you said anything about the size of, of, of it. So the size uh, is, is very, very small. So, um, you know, most Bluetooth beacons, some of them are, are, are fairly small with a coin cell battery, but we're going to be significantly smaller than that. It will be uh, essentially the same thickness as an NFC tag, and it will be smaller than an NFC tag as well because, because of the frequency of the Bluetooth spectrum that we're using, that actually allows us to have a sticker that is um, roughly one centimeter in diameter. And finally, this is not, you're from America, but this is not an American company. That's right, yeah. I, one of the things that got me really excited is um, the R&D team are all based uh, in Israel. So Israel's got an amazing reputation in terms of the startup community uh, and, uh, and the engineers there. So uh, you look at where some of the best encryption uh, work is being done. It's being done in Israel, and so that, that's where our technology is being developed. Is that uh, where the production also is going to take shape? Uh, probably not. Uh, so we'll we'll work with partners who are in the RFID business, and so we'll leverage um, uh, their production facilities that are all around the world. So it would be more like a license uh, production. You're not going to produce anything. Well, um, we're a fabulous semiconductor company. So just like Qualcomm, you know, Qualcomm chips are in almost every smartphone, um, but they don't make the chips. Uh, they outsource the, uh, the creation of the semiconductor, uh, the actual manufacturing it, to uh, a third party uh, fab plant. So we'll do that, uh, and then we will deliver those chips 
to partners in the RFID space who will use the machines that they use to uh, sandwich it into an inlay and produce the final product. Okay, Stephen, thank you very much. And congratulations to the new business with Merck then. Oh, yeah, we're really excited. Thanks a lot for talking to us.